every hood I roll through. Ah, even if I don't know you. Say what? I stay grinding always. On the freeway bumping the OJs. All BS aside, ain't no joking. You run up on me, you get your back broken. Stomped out and you can get your soul stolen. I'm OG as I can see at the French Open. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Widely known as Nocturnal, Roy Hubbard is an American songwriter and rapper with solid ties with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Like most musical artists, he had a strong affinity for music which is only natural because his father used to be in a musical band. He would go out with his father and his crew to their shows and sit in the garage while they performed. He noted once during an interview that he used to write poems at the tender age of 12. He started focusing on music from then on and got affiliated with one of the biggest music producers, Dr. Dre. Like a lot of his peers, Nocturno was always on the wrong side of the law and was once arrested and sentenced for drug peddling and was given a four-year jail term. His first encounter with Dr. Dre was on his birthday. It was then that he got a chance to audition for Dr. Dre. While Nocturno was in the studio with his wife, he started rapping to calm his nerves. Unknown to him, Dr. Dre was listening to him from afar. Now when it was time to get into the studio, Nocturno was ready. Dre put Nocturno on the spot by making him rap over every single beat that he played. Dre would randomly change beats as Nocturno rapped, and Nocturno would change styles immediately to suit the change of the beat. Instantly won the heart of Dr. Dre after that. At the end of the session, Dr. Dre took him out to celebrate his birthday. What a day. So I started rapping and he just randomly changed the beat, and I just kept rapping and he changed the beat again. I kept rapping with a different voice though. Every time he changed the beat, I'll change my style. He was like, yeah. You got it. That made me feel good. That made me feel like I had a future. Now even though Nocturno had strong ties with Dre, didn't end up signing to Aftermath at the time. He signed to Electra Records, where he was offered his first label, LA Confidential. This partnership later proved to be detrimental to his career. It literally stalled his career at the time, but we'll get into that in a sec. Like a lot of rappers back then, Nocturno broke onto the scene by doing a lot of features, most notably on Dr. Dre's 2001 album. He also featured on some tracks like Some LA and Bang Bang. He also took the lead on Dr. Dre's single Bad Intentions from his The Wash album and started performing on another track from a soundtrack called Straight West Coast. Growing up in a broken community, especially one as rugged as the West Coast, Nocturna found it pretty hard and almost impossible to avoid drugs, alcohol, and worse still, getting shot. For someone like Nocturno, he had a fair share of it all. Almost immediately after getting out of prison, he got shot. While recounting the experience during an interview with 15 Minutes of Fame Radio, he explained that the reason he got shot was due to the fact that he had an unsettled debt. He was supposed to do a drug drop, one that was guaranteed give him money that would pay his debts. But unfortunately for him, he got nabbed by the police and given a four-year term. That was because when I left and didn't take care of the bill, you know what I mean? He wanted to collect his cheese and when I got out of jail, I was on parole. I didn't have it. I told the I don't got it. He said, okay, pa, pa, handle it. I'm just glad he got bad aim. He's not a killer because I ain't dead. My thing is, I didn't know that at first. You know what I mean? I was only 22 years young. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know the importance of what I needed to do. So I was getting worked over. Getting into the mainstream rap scene was quite rocky for Nocturnal. When he first got onto the scene, it seemed like he had quite a considerable buzz. However, his first album rollout put a dent in that. Nocturnal hit the studio and worked day and night to birth his first album. However, it got leaked. This destroyed any hope of releasing a full-length album, and he had to go back to the drawing board. The album was supposed to be called Knox Landing. However, after the album got leaked, it was modified and changed to an EP with a new title called LA Confidential Presents, Nocturnal. When explaining why the album switched from an LP to an EP, Knox said the following. Well, it was a situation where I kind of got bootlegged more than cable in the hood. Back in 2001 or 2002. The thing was, we needed to regroup and try to get a budget with some songs that weren't being bootlegged so that we could come back with a LP. Which is the way I am. It took a while, it took a little bit of planning, but I believe it came out okay. LA Confidential Presents Nocturnal was released around 2002 through Electra Records. The recording was done in three different studios with the various producers. I'm talking Dr. Dre, Buddha, Fred Weck, Kanye West, 
and Nocturnal himself. Now even though the album didn't come out the way it was supposed to, it did produce two notable singles, namely The Knock and Music. Sipping cranberry juice on rocks with vodka, with pock and popper and red vodka. The Knock made its way to the Billboard Hot 100. It tried. However, it only made its way to the number 98th position on the chart. The single did much better on the US Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart, where it sat at number 68. Now, if you look at the song's performance, it clearly didn't do as well as what was projected. However, the song managed to get a Grammy nomination for the Best Short for Music Video at the 45th Annual Grammy Awards. Still, it lost the contest to Eminem's music video of Without Me. Interestingly enough, the song features Missy Elliott. Now, as you can imagine, due to the album leaking, the album did not perform very well on the charts. On the US Billboard Hot 200, it made its way to the 74th position on the chart, and number 26 on the US Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. Two years after the release of the EP, LA Confidential Presents Nocturnal, Knock came out with another project, and this time it was a full-length album called The Way I Am. The album was released around 2004, and came in at number 36 on the Billboard Hot 200 Albums chart. It also made its way to the US R&B Hip Hop Albums chart, and set of the 17th spot on the chart. The official debut album The Way I Am gave us a vivid insight into how talented Nock was. We see Nock dishing out tracks of top-notch quality, starting with an excellent lead single with the same name as the album. But what y'all didn't expect to see is me on TV with Snoop D-O-Double-G. He reintroduces himself and all that he represents to the listeners with massive confidence. The single's perfection is also significantly aided by a powerful Scott Storch production. Although the lead single started very great, the rest of the album did not follow suit. As mentioned above, The Way I Am is a beautiful piece of work and Knock showed extreme levels of diligence as a rapper, but many songs on the album were not entirely on par as the lead single. Another dope track is a song called Have Fun, produced by Timberland. Be out, not take her. Spot, found, get closer. After the release of The Way I Am around 2004, Nocturna didn't release much music, but did quite a few features on tracks like You Ain't Knowing, with Artist Sugar free from the 2006 album Just Add Water. Got me going from the 2007 album Digital Smoke with Jay Wells. He also featured on a Crooked Eye single titled Three Bitches. That was around 2008, and around 2009 he appeared on a song called we do this from the album Control Freak. Now around 2010, Nocturna spoke about the reasons for his being silent in the game and claimed that he did so to spend more time with his family. With the Leo and Electra and all that stuff, I said that for a reason because I didn't get lazy because I had to pull back. I have two children now. I had to pull back and focus on them for a little while. I was missing their first steps and birthdays. I was working too much. I was probably only home for two months out of the year. I had to pull back for a minute and value what's really important. Now, one thing I've noticed is whenever an artist says something like, I stopped making music because I wanted to focus on family, or I just wanted to focus on me, chances are they're bullshitting. Most times their music wasn't working and they were forced to stop making music because nobody was checking for it. Other times their labor situation kept them from dropping new music and feeding their fan base, forcing them to lose all of the buzz they acquired. Let's face it, if Nocturno's buzz was bigger and his career took off, he wouldn't have needed to take a break to focus on raising his kids. I don't buy it. It wasn't until around 2011 when Nocturno came out with some new stuff, his third studio album. His third album was called Knoxville, one which was released under Treacherous Records and Hoopla Worldwide. Once Knox released his third project, it became very clear. Nocturno was never going to be a big selling artist. Knoxville failed to chart, however one of the album's singles made it to the US rap charts. I've Been Here For Years was spotted at number 71 on the US rap charts. Just like a lot of rappers, Nocturna accumulated a beef with the game. Taking his stand with 50 Cent on the beef that ensued between the game and 50 Cent, Nocturna poured out his emotions during an interview and told the world how he felt about 50 Cent and the game. During the interview, he said that the game owes much of his success to 50 Cent, and 50 Cent practically saved the game's career. According to Nock, the game was just a minute away from being kicked out of Aftermath due to his inability to write hooks for his songs. The game was about to get dropped from Aftermath, you hear me? and Aftermath was about to drop him. Indiscope was about to drop him and 50 Cent picked him up and put hooks. The only reason why he was about to get dropped from Aftermath is because he couldn't make no hooks for his own music. So 50 Cent picked him up. You hear me? I hope you hear me. He made some hooks. 50 Cent made some hooks for him 
and put him out and sold 5 million records. What's wrong with that? From the moment Nak made that statement, it started going down. The game took to his Twitter page to take a counter jab at Nak. Four days ago, Nocturno was hitting me on here saying how much he a fan and can we work. Now he on the radio talking sideways cause I said no. <laughs> see you when I see you bitch ass n You had half a hit. You only sold three copies and now you a crackhead. Get some help n or go OD somewhere f The game kept provoking Nocturno and said the following. This was little homie reaching out. Now he dissing? Somebody help a blood out. Now put a diss out so I can put your ass to sleep. P.S. Give you a quarter piece if you come watch my Bentley and range up smoker. You such a hoe. I might let my little sister give you a lethal 16. She killing most of the out here anyway. Call hashtag 1-800 get some fans. <laughs> R.I.P. Cocktail. Music career born 61499 died today. Ever since Nocturnal made that statement about the game, the two rappers went back and forth dissing each other. The beef between Nocturno and the game lasted for months. Months of constant back and forth, months of constant bad mouthing at every given opportunity. They would trash talk at each other on social media, during magazine and radio interviews. Nocturno replied to the game's taunts as the game labeled Nocturno gay. Now we all know that rappers take offense to being called gay and Nocturno was not the exception to the rule. The line was drawn and the game finally caught the full attention of Nocturno and he decided to officially go in on the game. Nocturno went on the radio and dissed the game by calling him gay. Something we've heard before, so it was not very impactful. Nocturno stated that his wife told him to stand down, but according to him, he had to stick to his nuts on this particular case. Nocturno dissed the game even further by calling the game's father a beautician and even threatened the game with physical violence. Now whenever most rappers beef with the game, they always seem to recall the game's stripper past. We've heard 50 Cent say that the game used to be a stripper, and now it was Nocturnal's turn. Nocturnal questioned the game once again and called him gay, because game used to strip for a living. Now I won't lie, this is probably one of the dumbest beefs I've ever heard of. Now around 2008, Nocturnal revealed another reason why his career didn't take off. According to the man, he was too busy enjoying the lavish side of being a celebrity to focus on what mattered most, his paper. I feel like I was drinking and smoking too much, wasn't worried about my business, you know? I was too busy having fun instead of just worrying about solidifying my family. That's a mistake you make sometimes when you're young. I'm older now and I believe I can bounce back. I made good music before and I'm on my way to trying to be legendary, so I'm not gonna give up. Clearly Nock fumbled the bag. Nocturno is presently still making music and even had a deal with Sony. In fact, he was involved in a soundtrack called Snow Black around 2020. Around 2019, he posted a cover of an album with the title, Nocturno Presents the Book of Knock. Nocturno is currently married and is very fond of his partner. He also has two kids. If you want to contact Nocturno, you can do so at his email or Instagram at nocturno at gmail.com at nocturno llbc where he has about 3,000 followers. Nocturno gets about 40,000 monthly listeners on Spotify and his most popular songs on the platform are music, the Knock, The Way I Am, Straight West Coast, and LA Night and Day. That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. What happened in Nocturne, in your opinion? Let me know down below. If you have a video request, be sure to let me know as well. New would have been two video dropping next week. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.